Yeah, can, can, am I using the microphone the right way? If you can't, if you can't hear me, put up your hand. Uh, All right, sorry. Uh, wow, that was a really good talk. <laughs> and now I feel like that lady who went on the Martha Stewart show to talk about how she makes fried chicken. <laughs> All right, well, anyway. <laughs> um, so two words or uh, two longer phrases are anagrams if they have exactly the same letters and probably in, or possibly in some different order. So like soapstone and teaspoons both have uh, two O's, an N, an E, an A, two S's, and a P, but in different orders. And uh, after I found that out, I found out that you can actually uh, buy soapstone teaspoons. So <laughs> it's the perfect gift for the anagram lover in your life. Uh, and if you're into anagrams, you know that you just like see them everywhere. And this talk, like the first edition of it, started with like three minutes of like, oh, and here are my favorite anagrams, and like page after page after page. And then I tested it on my kids, and I'm like, huh, this talk is 18 minutes long. But, so here's some Philadelphia street signs, and Locust is an anagram of Clouts. Irving is an anagram of Virgin. Arch Street, if you take the ST on the sign there, is an anagram of Starch. Pine Street is an anagram of Instep. And... Uh, that's, I'm going to try to hold myself to like just those. Uh, anyway, <laughs> finding anagrams is an awesome computer application. Uh, and uh, people ask strange questions about how you do this. And there, there's one good way to do this. And this is how you do it. You, uh, you're going to convert each word that might be an anagram to what's called a canonical form, uh, which means you're just going to like put it into some way that uh, two words will have the same canonical form if and only if they're anagrams. So the easiest way to do that is just to sort the letters into alphabetical order. Because if two words are anagrams, they have the same letters. And when you sort the letters into alphabetical order, you get the same thing. So here we have the word sanction, and the other word contains. And when you sort the letters into alphabetical order, you get A-C-I, N-N-O-S-T. But if you have some other word that isn't an anagram, even if it looks kind of similar, like continua, you get A-C-I, N-N-O-T-U. And that's not the same, so it's not an anagram. Uh, and it's really easy to write a program that goes through your word list, your dictionary, or whatever, calculates the canonical form for each one, uh, and then uh, hashes them into a hash, uh, or a dictionary, or whatever you call it, and when two, uh, two words go in the same hash bucket, they're anagrams of each other, and then they get printed out. And in 1991, I didn't know Perl yet, so I did it in awk, and I was gonna, I actually like rewrote awk a code for this, just to like remind myself what it was like. I was going to show it, and wow, awk sucks. <laughs> so you have to write your own sort function. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, so let's see. Um, I had the word list from Webster's Second International Dictionary. Uh, I didn't know at the time, but that had been like laboriously entered by Dennis Ritchie uh, <laughs> for very much the same reason. And I had some other miscellaneous, whoops, miscellaneous dictionaries, and I fed them my program, and I got a, out, the output was every single anagram in this 250,000 some word word list, and it sucked. Uh, this is too small to read. Hold on, let's make this bigger. So, like, the first word on the list is that A-A-L, all, is an anagram of Allah, A-L-A. Well, you know, you don't need the computer to tell you stuff like that. It's like, oh, yeah, and the computer is like, oh, and eat is an anagram of T. Isn't that awesome? And, that, and then, like, if you're, like, looking at this, you can see it's just like, and then there's AAM is an anagram of AMA, whatever that is, and then zootype is an anagram of ozotype, as if we cared. <laughs> and, all right, all right, well, clearly, like, this isn't working. What if I look at the really long ones? Maybe the long ones will be a little bit more awesome. Uh, and the, the longest ones, I sorted them by length, and they were just as bad in a kind of a different way. The one I want to focus on here uh, is kind of, it's, it's cholecystoduodenostomy, right? So there's at least two things wrong with this. One of them is, what the heck is a cholecystoduodenostomy? It turns out cholo, it, cholecysto is the gallbladder, and duodeno is the duodenum, which is like the bottom end of the stomach. And a uh, stomy is like a surgical procedure to make a hole from one to the other. Stomos is like Greek for hole. So it's when you make these things should be like connected, but they're not. So you make a hole between them. And then the anagram of that, cholecystoduodenostomy, is duodenocholecystostomy, <laughs> which is when you make a hole from the duodenum to the gallbladder. 
So A, these words are words that nobody knows. That's a problem. And B, the anagram is boring. And if you can look at the other ones, like they're all like boring in the same way. Chromophotolithograph, photochromolithograph. <laughs> so there's 40,000, 44,000 entries in this, in this file. There must be something good in there, and how are we going to find it? And Colossus' duodenostomy <laughs> gave me the idea of like, okay, here's, here's what's wrong with this. Um, it's got too few chunks, because you chop it into three chunks, and you switch the gallbladder and the duodenum, and, right, and maybe anagrams with more chunks are more complicated. And that idea has a lot to recommend it. For example, um, if we say that a score is how many chunks you have to cut the thing into before you can rearrange it to make the other one, then, okay, short words will always have a low score, because you can't cut a five-letter word into more than five chunks. And... Uh, mathematicians will tell you, well, every word has an anagram, it anagrams to itself, and you can say then, but yes, but that only scores one. And they'll have to say, oh, well, I'll write that. Uh, so <laughs> how do you calculate the number of chunks? This is not immediately obvious. In this example, this is a kind of a weird example, because these are words that people aren't really familiar with, but for this discussion, there's a really excellent words um, for reasons that'll become clear later. A critidae turns out to be the scientific jargon for grasshoppers, so you all know about that. And Sideridae is a family of sea urchins. Uh, and there we got a picture of one there. It's spiny, like you'd expect. And here, these nine-letter words, I have them mapping to each other with these arrows, showing that you can rearrange them with eight chunks. And so this should score eight. Well, no, 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 because there might be a way to do it with fewer chunks. Like you can see, they both end in idae, I-D-A-E, and maybe that should be a whole chunk. Uh, and in fact, if you analyze this carefully, you find out that really there's only five chunks here. Or you can do it with five chunks. You map the idae's and you map the other two ids, and then the ACR go to the ACR, and that's the last three. Hmm, all right, so how do you find that? Well, you know, the id i kind of jumps out at you, and it turns out actually, though, that there's three different ways to do it with five chunks. It's really not that obvious, and I could stand here and claim that you can do it with four chunks, and who's gonna gain say that? Come on, Plotkin? I don't think so, all right, right. <laughs> So how do you calculate the minimum number of chunks? And in 1991, I wrote this program to do this, and it's really simple. It just tries every possible mapping between the letters. And then you first think, well, okay, but there's nine letter words, there's nine factorial possible mappings. No, 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 we don't have to do that because we know the C has to go to the C because there's only one of each, and the E has to go to the E, and the R has to go to the R, and then there's only two places the A can go because there's only two A's in Sideridae. And so it says, all right, well, there's two places the A's could go. Then it recurses, it maps the C to the C, and it maps the R to the R, and then it says, okay, there's two places the I could go, and it recurses again, and it only has to recurse like nine times and make six possible choice points. So um, there's only eight things it has to check, and it quickly comes out with the fact that the, the least chunky, no, least chunky, most chunky? The fewest number of chunks is five, because there's only eight mappings to consider. Uh, some of, them are, some of them are harder than that. Like to handle cholesis to do a denostomy, there's 7,680 possible mappings, and in 1991 that took a while, um, like a few seconds. And to do the whole dictionary of a quarter million words took you know, like two or three hours or something, but the results, results were totally, totally worth it um, because I found the single best anagram in English, and I'm gonna tell you what it is. One of the words is cinematographer, which is like as familiar and well-known as any 15-letter word could possibly be. And what does cinematographer anagram to? It anagrams to megachiropterin, <laughs> which isn't that familiar, but it's a giant bat. It's a giant bat, death from above! Ah! <laughs> All right, so I was completely satisfied. I considered the project a success, and I put it aside for 25 years. Oh, here's other stuff we're gonna skip, because Erdi tells me I've got 64 seconds left. So 25 years go by, and I thought, you know, I use this kind of brute force algorithm to find the best chunkings. I asked on Stack Exchange, is there a better algorithm for this? And the answer is, there is. Um, you can turn a pair of anagram words into a graph structure, depending on how the letters overlap. And here we can see, in Cinematographer, there's an RA and an ER. And in Megachiropterin, there's an RA and an ER. And to get the fewest number of chunks, you'd like to keep these letters together. You'd like to map the RA to the RA so that instead of going to separate places and making two chunks, they go to the same place and make one chunk. And you'd like to do that with the ER also. But because of the way they overlap in megachiropterin, you can't do both at once. 
So you build a graph where the nodes represent these pairs of letters that you would like to stay together, and then nodes are connected by an edge if they're incompatible and you can't do both at once. And then once you've built out this graph, you find the maximum independent subset, the largest set of nodes that are not incompatible, not connected by edges, and that tells you the minimum chunking. All right, I'm at 10 minutes now. Ernie, can I get 60 more seconds? All right. Maximum independent set is NP hard, and if you were at my talk last year, you know that means nobody knows a good algorithm for it. Um, so people will tell you, oh, well, it's NP hard, you just gotta give up. No, 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 because NP hard, it has so many loopholes, and one of the loopholes is that if the problem's actually easy, it's just still, it's easy. Like, if you're doing this for soapstone and two teaspoons, the graph you build, they only have one overlap, so the graph has only one node, and finding the maximal independent, maximum independent set of a graph with one node just isn't that difficult. <laughs> it's got one node, and this is a pretty typical situation. So, I built this thing out. Even in hard cases, it's not all that hard. Here's all the complicated overlaps in Acrididae and Sideridae. There's like a whole bunch of them, and the graph has eight nodes, and it turns out there's like three different maximum independent subsets that all have four nodes each. And, you know, even if you do this in the most naive possible way, there's only 255 possible subsets, and you just have to examine them, and, you know, to examine 255 subsets takes approximately zero time. Uh, here's cholecystic duodenostomy. It looks a little worse, but it's still just not, it's manageable. Anyway, I did this, I implemented the thing, I ran it on my dictionary, and it spit out all the anagrams, ordered by number of chunks in three and a half seconds. Woo! Yeah. So then, all right, one slide left, okay? Already is the timekeeper. So I am a data hoarder. Um, I'm, no, I guess I am proud, actually. I save everything, uh, and I still had the 1992 source code that did the scoring in the naive way. Uh, it did take me a couple hours to hunt it up. I, you know, lost it, but I found it again. And uh, I ran it because I wanted to know what is the actual improvement here from using the better algorithm as compared to like using 25 years worth of better hardware. And so I ran the old code, which used to take two and a half, three hours. It took four seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so the moral of the story is sometimes you need a clever algorithm and you know, sometimes you don't. And then I, <laughs> thank you all.